I mean, you're known for playing, uh, obviously, heavies, but uh, people probably don't re- don't know this. You know, if they go back to your work, you've always tried to, you've always done uh, comedy. I mean, I remember your sitcom, uh, Daddy-O, and... Sure. I mean, even your first big film, you were playing a comic icon, and then there was the Three, Three Stooges movie. So, so, so what was it like finally getting to, getting back into that comedy mode? Well, that's why I jumped at it because it was an opportunity to 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 play you know a character that I could completely disappear and you know and and do a comedic turn and I you know I just wasn't getting many opportunities to to do comedy, let alone you know sort of outrageous stoner comedy and it was just very funny on paper and really good people involved and I just thought you know this this could be a blast and sure enough it really was. It was it was a great time shooting this, and that's why I'm supporting the film because, you know, it, it's really funny. It's good, you know, and I and little movies like this, you know, you, you got to really help them out. You got to get to the word out, and I really think that this was perhaps the first ever cinematic stoner comedy in history. You know, the way John shot the movie, it just really. I don't know. Have you seen it? Yes, and yes, it does look good. It was uh, really well shot, you know, yeah. and and, uh, and it was just fun for all of us. Colin Hanks and I had a blast together. We laughed every day, blew tons of takes laughing, and, <laughs> you know, that's just, you know, it was, it was fun for me because, I, as you say, I've been, you know, uh, playing a bunch of sort of dark and heavy characters uh, in, in recent years, and it was just an opportunity for me to have some fun. Yeah, it- so is it true? So you've done both. So uh, is it true the adage about comedy is harder than drama? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, particularly in film because um, you don't have the uh, you, you know the benefit of, uh, of instant feedback with an audience. You know, with a live audience, um, if you're doing a comedy, you you know night to night you can you know see where the laughs lay and mm-hmm. you know and. Uh, you can get your, your your timing honed in, but you know with a with a comedic film, you it's instinct. A lot of it is instinct and just believing in the funny of it and just committing to it a hundred percent. But it's definitely much more difficult to um, film a comedy um, that really works. Mm-hmm. And uh, to their credit, I think everybody involved was really, really ultra committed and and really. Um, committed to their characters 100. percent You know, it was just a ridiculousness. We we just really relished in being playing these absurd people. You and know. Was the uh, the hair the idea to have hair? Is that in the script or was that something you brought to it to get? That was it something that John and I talked about right away. I, you know, because I I saw him as a clown and I wanted him to be a redhead. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, John loved the idea right away and embraced it. And we just, uh, you know, it wasn't in the script. It was something we just discussed. And, um, uh, you know, we just flew with it. And it really, I, I think it really, really worked. And it was also an added way of, of me sort of disappearing in the character. And one of the thrills for me is at the Sundance Film Festival when the when the movie ran, you know, the vast majority of people in that audience did not know it was me um, because, you know, between uh, the way, the look, the way I walked, the way I spoke, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, that transatlantic, you know, (laughs) that mid-Atlantic sound and everything, it it, it was, you know, um, uh, a real fun character turn for me and people didn't know it was me until the credits ran. And let me ask you bring up Sundance, and, that's, and I wanted to bring that up. I mean, talk about that Sundance experience because uh, if I know my if I know my history correctly, I mean that's got to be totally different. I mean, I remember as a kid, I remember reading about how Wired went to the the Cannes Film Festival, and and now you're at Sundance. So, I mean, those two polar those had to be two polar opposite kind of experiences. Oh, absolutely. You know, one was a controversial mess, and one was just a you know, sort of a euphoric um, love fest and huge, great, great reviews for um, high school. And uh, the only thing about uh, that's been frustrating is that was 2010. You know, we've been really, you know, sort of looking at this from a distance, uh, meeting the guys in the cast and sort of going, what happened to high school? Why hasn't it come out yet? You know, it's just about, you know, 
you know, putting together a, a distribution deal that was palatable, I guess, to the financiers. I, I don't know exactly what the situation there was, but, you know, I was bummed because, of, uh, you know, I knew we had this really funny, good movie in the can, and I'm thrilled now that it's going to get an opportunity for audiences to see it. And I just want to, it's one of those kind of films that could go viral, I mean, particularly, you know, the whole college scene when, you know, people start seeing this. Uh, it, it always had the earmarks of a potentially, you know, classic comedy in the vein of uh, Fast Times at Richmond High or right. Ferris Bueller's Day Off or one of right. those kind of films. And uh, I just want to, I just want to ask real quick. It, uh, I, I do want to ask about Wired because uh, I'm actually uh, an admirer of your performance in that film. I, I, I mean, it's obviously uh, script-wise, it's obviously very troubled and very messy. Yeah. But uh, I do agree, I don't know if you remember this, but I do agree with the old, uh, I remember when the movie got reviewed on Cisco and Ebert, and I, I do agree with their take in that, that, you know, whatever the problems of the film were, your performance and Gary Groom's performance as Ned Dan Eckward were, were very good. Um, and so I'm, I'm wondering, when you're in that, I mean, because obviously it was a big break for you, but also, you know, what do you? What does that look like to you now, almost twenty five years later? Well, in all honesty, that, that you know, I could we could spend a good two hours on this, uh, but you know, the 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 real abridged version is that you know that it, it was Dickensian. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was uh, you know um, for me because remember it was the first time I was ever on a film set in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, all of a sudden, my first gig in film or or television is playing an icon that I loved. Um, I looked at it as an homage, and I think that Gary and I really threw ourselves at at, at it. Uh, uh, I was very, very green in terms of my, you know, uh, in all honesty, I only saw the film once. Um, uh you know, and it was at the Cannes Film Festival, and I was uh, I was devastated because of how much of it had been cut. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, and and we and and they had you, they, apparently there were so many lawsuits pending against the film that they couldn't use a lot of what was really the core of the film while mm-hmm. we were shooting it. So I mean, I look at it as an incredible learning experience for me. I'm glad that it happened in, in the way that it did. Um, um, it humbled me in a lot of ways. Um, it made me really appreciate um, the successes that I've had um, mm-hmm. subsequent to that. Uh, you know, so geez, I, I, I don't know how to encapsulate it in a in a in a in a in a, in a matter of a soundbite. You know, I just it was a, sort of an epic time in my life and very scary and tumultuous, but. Um, uh, it, it, at the end of the day, I have no regrets, and I'm uh, I'm 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 glad on a lot of levels that it happened because I learned a lot from the process, and uh, and uh, uh, as many things of how not to approach a film and how to uh, as as to how to you know you know what I'm saying right right uh, so yeah it was uh, you know uh, again I was I was doing off Broadway theater and waiting tables when I got that job I was a kid <laughs> a big break. Uh, you know, heady stuff uh, right. based on a book by you know the great Bob Woodward. You know, took down Nixon. It was very like overwhelming at the time, and all I could do was fall back on my training as an actor. You know, I went to Boston University School of Fine Art, and you know, uh, had been an actor on the stage professionally <laughs> since I was 13. So I was just completely reliant on that and just trying to do my best you know, moment to moment as an actor, all the peripheral stuff was distracting and and, and hard because it was frightening, you know, um, my first interviews to have people asking me if I thought I would be blackballed or if I thought I'd, you know, ever work again was, as you can imagine, kind of terrifying. Right. But, right. but uh, here it is 25 years later or whatever, how many years it is, and right. everything's okay. And- my last question I'll ask you, and i got to ask because I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, I understand you just worked with uh, Taylor Hackford. I did. Uh, in a movie. Uh, what is that, and and, what, and uh, what was that experience like? 
the the short answer there is um Taylor is a is a really um <laughs> he's an interesting character. He's uh larger than life um and a really powerful presence and, and he has a hot uh, wife. Oh uh, yes, oh and and a phenomenally talented wife too. Um and it was just uh it was a it was a cool experience. Um I'd say the only downside of the experience is that it was August and September in New Orleans, so it was <laughs> beyond hot. <laughs> but it was uh, it was interesting. It was good. 